dude I need to, I need to get it together They think they can do what we do But do it better Chive turkeys getting bread and getting cheddar Go get sandwiched by your real competitor Let them up, I'm getting better No time to be fed up Go get us for false profits Get stoned like Rosetta I'm just getting started, sorry I can't let up And even if I could, I wouldn't Cause it's a setup For the next line, wait in line for the next time My intellect's fine when I find it Nothing's really mine I will do whatever it takes to get better I will do whatever it takes to get better I will do whatever it takes to get better Better, better, better I am better, better, better I am whatever Alright Lead in One Two Three Welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. I am your host, Edward Shelton, a.k.a. Dark Logos. And this is where we look at the strategies, tactics, and mechanics uh, behind the game of Heroclix. It's uh, pretty decent in Kansas City today. It's like 80-something degrees with lots of wind and uh, cloud cover. So uh, my uh, back area isn't cooking as much. Uh, but still, it's uh, warm outside. Uh, today, uh, I have a special guest uh, for you listeners. Uh, I have uh, Mr. Alex Avila. Is it, I hope I'm saying that right. The current... Uh, yeah, right, the first time. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, current Heroclix world champion. Uh, so say hello for, to the nice people, sir. Hello, Heroclix community. Great to be here. <laughs> All right. Well... Uh, as, as you may or may not know, but you definitely should know since I've done a previous show on his team, uh, he has played one of the most interesting, uh, yeah, the most interesting uh, and creative teams uh, for a Heroclix World Championship uh, since LAMP. Uh, no hypersonic speed on his team. <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh, so, 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 Alex... Give us some some basics. What when you started thinking about this team? What what was your your design process? What what type of different figures or, or different teams did you go through before you you landed on Morgan Le Fay, Wasp, uh, Full Gauntlet, and uh, Scarlet Witch? Um, well, okay, so I've got a team I test with. Uh, call ourselves Team Rubicon. It's got like three or four members here in Virginia. I got a couple guys down in North Carolina. So in the month leading up to Gen Con, we went through, I mean, what we thought was everything. Every competitive team we could think of, from Uatu Unspoken to shut down uh, Century Void, to, what do we think of? Oh, uh, the double TK combo with the Astral Range of the Gauntlet to get Magog into the starting area. For oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, we went through everything. Um but whenever I make a team that I want to take to a competition, I always go back to the way my brother taught me to play clicks. Um, he's big on JSA and Defenders, and all the teams he made when he was playing with me all just had amazing synergy. You know, mm-hmm. everybody's got an 18, so nobody's a soft target. Everybody's got like a 10 to hit, or everybody's got their thing they're doing on the team. It's not a one hit brick piece like. 300 points Superman or something like that. Okay. So, you all tested all these different teams. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I figure like right up, you know, un, until, you know, two weeks before the show. I mean, what, what other teams were going through your mind of like, this is viable or what other stuff was, was shifting to the top that you eventually, you know, didn't look at? Um, Century Void definitely did. I mean, it was hard to turn away from hypersonic speed multi-attack. Uh, in fact, my teammate Dre, he played Sentry Void in the uh, Constructed Grinder, got in his first one, and made 15th in the uh, day one semifinals. So, like, that was, I mean, I don't like the piece, but it's hard to, to turn down that amount of power. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that everyone in the top 16 was worried about him, so everybody had a plan to deal with him, like high defenses or uh, throwing leech at somebody. And so I think every that's why you didn't see him, because everybody was worried and going a different route. Yeah, so you think the 
the issue was is that everyone was so afraid of Century Void. They said, you know, I'm not going to play him because he's so much of a big target. Everyone's going to already have a plan for him. Pretty yes, much, yes. exactly. Hmm. Okay. I, I know for me personally, uh, when I was going through the pieces, I was like, yeah, he's going to show up, you know, but it, he's going to be a big risk uh, because yeah, everyone I is going to be gunning for him. So, yeah. all right. So the the questions come in into the forefront of my mind is what what made you pick Morgan Le Fay? Because uh, for your main primary attacker, uh, or for your let me let me rephrase that for the highest point figure on your team, she doesn't follow the the typical format. She has. Uh, a, a decent range, uh, and for the maps, I pretty much said, you know, she has a seven range, which is optimal for the maps. Uh, she doesn't have running shot. She just has psychic blast. Uh, so why why did you pick Morgan Le Fay, and more so, why did you decide to have Morgan Le Fay with the gauntlet, you know, at, at the at the big crux uh, of your team? So I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> um, I picked her mostly for the psychology of it. Um, in terms of, I didn't want people shooting at Wasp. Because Wasp is really the primary attacker of the team. Once she starts getting you in cast, it's a hard cycle to break out of. Hmm. Um, and you know, she's slowly weakening you, getting you off that sweet top click while she's, uh, putting tokens on you. Something we haven't seen since, uh, the Seed Stunning Blow. Yeah. So... I figured Morgan Le Fay, she's got this incredible synergy. Uh, she's a ten pole that you can stick Avengers with. And with Chaos War coming out, there's so many Avengers. Like, everyone, well, not everyone, but almost everyone was running Scarlet Witch. Mm -hmm. So, if I can get line of sight, then your Scarlet Witch has a seven to hit on her Psychic Blast. Um, she's just, oh, she's just a big deterrent. Because everyone's looking at her saying, I want to take her out. But first, I need to get rid of the Scarlet Witch. And so I think Wasp became a, a third option in their mind that they weren't really considering. I had a couple of people one-shot Wasp after they saw what she does. And that made some games really close. Hmm. Okay. And see, uh, when I, I looked at two of your games that you played, because uh, mm -hmm. they... I think there's only two of you playing. Uh, one is against uh, Patricia, Patricia Lamb, uh, and of course against your final game uh, against George. And the thing that was sort of amazing to me was how much how much frustration that a, a, you can do with Wasp, and not only that, it's like you can't hit her straight up. You know, starting out. You know, it becomes really difficult. You have to hit a 19-plus deal with Super Senses. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really, really difficult uh, overall. And then uh, the lockdown control that she gives is, is ridiculous. And so <laughs> I, uh, later on, I, I end up, I'm, I'm told the listeners, I think that we're going to see like a double Wasp meta uh, because you can push them and do six clicks of damage to two targets, you know, if they, they don't have indomitable or willpower or anything like that, and pretty much lock them down for two turns, and that figure hasn't done anything. Um, yeah, and then when they push, um, they can both enhance each other. Uh, a big thing for me was in-cap someone, then push to in-cap, like you said, uh, but make sure she's adjacent to Morgan Le Fay or uh, Scarlet Witch, because that one more damage on Psychic Blast, especially on Scarlet Witch, is a real game changer. Hmm. Yeah, because then she got it does like what four damage? Uh, yeah, you yeah. can pump her up to uh Morgan Fay's got four, so you can pump her up to a five. And a fifty point Scarlet Witch shooting for three before you deal with your perplexes. I mean, fifty points, that's scary as hell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's it's one of those situations where when I come back uh, and I keep looking at the games, uh, there's there's some things that, that are a, a big distinct. The first one is, unfortunately, all the maps that we see you play 
uh, is on uh, the garden map. So why why are you keep going back to that map in particular? That map was every time I won map roll, I went to the garden. Um, and it's two things. Uh, it gives me an easy uh, bump up to my defense from range. Mm -hmm. And there's nowhere to hide on that map. I was really scared of a Fast Forces Superman or even... Uh, George's Black Adam, if you hit him on the hypersonic speed and he can run around walls, I mean, I, I can catch him, but I'm going to have be using all of my resources to set up an attack mm -hmm. instead of having multiple attacks because he has nowhere to hide. Yeah. Um, oh, there is one more match uh, by, with, uh, I can't remember his last name, but Rob, who was part of uh, Patricia's crew from... Uh, Canada, mm -hmm. and he had this awesome team of Red Skull pumping out uh, the gauntlet rolls and also building himself a doomsday weapon. Yeah, I saw that. I, I, yeah. oh gosh, Go sorry. Um, I when I saw that, I thought to myself, this is brilliant. At the <laughs> same time, it's overkill, and people are going to look at that team and they're going to copy it, and then they're going to realize how hard that team is to pull off. Be yeah, yeah, your barrier positioning has to be perfect on that team. Mm -hmm. And Rob's was. I was fortunate enough to have a three damage on Wasp starting out to blow out a wall so Morgan could base everybody. Um, and what you don't see is we actually played back-to-back, -back, and the next round I took him to the garden, uh, and that game was much closer. He one-shotted Wasp straight off the bat, and that... That game it came down to a couple of die rolls. He, his, uh, just a shout out to uh, Rob. His ability to adapt to a team he's seen played it was almost instantaneous. It was incredible. Hmm. Wow. I mean, that I'll have to go and try to see if I can find that game. I, 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 I will say this: my my time has been sort of stretched, and uh, I've I've had a, a bazillion things happening, and I. I was like, let me make sure I can watch some matches. And uh, uh -huh. it, it did sort of hurt that some of the matches didn't have sound. So yeah. you couldn't know what was going on. You could sort of yeah. assume, but that's that's sort of frustrating. Okay, so yeah. let's, let's bring back to what I feel is a, a game changer element for your team. You pack Secret Avengers, ATA. What 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 I, happened? Did you like you built the team and then you're like, well, I have points left over. Let me put this on. Or did you specifically say like, I need to be able to fit this in? You know, how am I going to fit this in? Um, it was an afterthought, and it turned out to be the best afterthought I could have had. Um, I can't tell you how many games I started and said, and Secret Avengers on Wasp and Scarlet Witch are you familiar with it? And the opponent says, no. I said, oh, well, then you're in for a surprise. As I pass the ATA over to them to read, and they get a frown on their face. Yeah. Like, for five points, that thing is half Watchmen, half Power Cosmic, um, and it's copyable. I cannot believe that team ability is copyable. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so easy to abuse. Yes, I just, I, I, I don't know why they didn't, you know, stop that from being a wild card. Now, there's some other, the other Avengers uh, abilities, like, I know, like, Mighty Avengers, it's sort of useful if you have a whole bunch of, like, bricks with super strength, but mm -hmm. other than that, like, you know, the rest of the, the ATAs really weren't that definitive, uh, but I, I will say, like, the Secret Avengers one was just, like, hands down way better than all of the other ones. Huge, yeah. Although, um, it, it, for all those out, of you out there who haven't played with the Avengers Heroic Age ATA, uh, all it takes is one six, and it completely changes the tempo of the game. For two points a model, that one I think is the... the silver medal of the ATAs from this set. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll read it for the listeners, because uh, I know some of you are on the go, 
and don't have uh, the internet's access. Uh, and some of you download my show. So uh, it's uh, when a character using this team ability is given a move action after actions resolve, roll a d6 that can't be re-rolled on a roll of a 6, remove an action token from that character. Uh, so pretty much if you move and you have one action tokens, you roll that 6, you don't have any. After all's resolved, if you have two, after all, and after all's resolved, you you have one. Uh, if somehow you're able to copy that ATA onto a uh, colossal, watch out. <laughs> Definitely oh, colossal wow. multi attack. I about that. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm telling you, man. I have spent like the last three months just looking at ha what figures can help me break master mode more. Like that is. <laughs> That has been my, like, passion. Like, once I had the full gauntlet, I was like, oh, yeah. Like, Master Mode. And, like, they made me cry so hard when they uh, made the uh, Bizarre World map for Gen Con. Because they pretty much just said, like, double fingers to Colossals. And uh, I, was, I knew, like, Master Mode had the full potential to come in and win. If Master Mode, full gauntlet, and some support, whatever it was... And it could just, you know, pop in, boom, you know, 10 range. I hate to put it like this. First move, 10 squares with phasing, and then range combat expert. Whatever you want. And Absolutely. Yeah. And actually 12 with the space gem on the gauntlet. Oh, yeah. That's if, yeah, you start off with that. Yeah, so it, it can be really broke good with Master Mode. But that Bizarre World map just screws him over. He can't. He can't move anywhere, which is yeah, and he has trouble with uh, Realm of Death as well. Yeah, that one too. I can, but see, I can understand Realm of Death. That at least he can like break down walls. You can't do anything about elevation. Like <laughs> you're you're just sort of stuck. But um, okay, so so I'm I I'm let's let's I'm get back on target. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, all right, so when we when we look at your team, you have you have your Secret Avengers ATA, you have uh, Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch becomes this no brainer uh, in the meta. We we have this uh, uniqueness uh, that is Morgan Le Fay. What were your rounds like? You know, what was that tempo that you were seeing in in, in your games, and what was causing you the the what was helping you the most, and what was causing you the most problems? Because I know a whole lot of people want to know about, definitely with the specific team design. Um, what helped me the most was, uh, once again, I think the psychology and the synergy. Um, Morgan would say sporting at 19 or 20 all the time um, made people really want to go after Scarlet Witch, which was a problem for Fast Horses, Superman, people like that who are amazing but their first click is that sweet spot. If yeah. you deal one Mystics to them, they have to sit, and you can Psychic Blast them. Um, I had a game against a Fast Horses Superman, Beast Boy, and Johnny Quick with Full Gauntlet on Superman. Mm -hmm. And that player was, one, very good player, and two, that Beast Boy gave me fits. Because I would perplex someone up to a 20 defense and then the beast boy would just outsiders them yeah like oh i have a 17 fantastic yeah yeah i i and sort for, of thought, yeah mm -hmm. beast boy was meta i i sort of called that but he he, he becomes <laughs> tough to field so so pretty much it's anyone that was able to, to mess with your stat modifications that's when it was a problem it, that that was a big problem uh, there was a team by, I can't remember his real name, but on the realms he goes by Hair 10. He makes these fantastic, uh, rings for the Oreo bases. Yeah. And he made some of his own custom objects, which looked really cool. But he used Leech and Carol Ferris. Or, uh, or I guess it's Star Sapphire. The 75 points from the War of Life Fast Horses. Okay. And this combo was fantastic. He would... Uh, name a character, uh, like for me, he named uh, Morgan Le Fay and Leech, and they couldn't attack each other. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's this great idea of like, hmm, okay. And I ended up having to poison Leech to death with Morgan the Fae to finally get him out of there. And that, that game, that was probably my, no offense to any other opponents, but that was probably my closest game uh, all weekend because it's, it ended up with Morgan the Fae power two, Superman power two, sitting there pulse waving each other until one fell down. Oh, wow. Because the thing about Star Sapphire in that power, it, it can be really annoying, but when you add it on to Leech, that is a, that's a brilliant combination. So I, I would say, listeners, you know, that's one to pick up and, and modify as, as you wish. Uh, same as that Awatu Leech combo tech I was talking about last, uh, the other previous show. Not Dragon Con show, skip the Dragon Con show. Go back to, I think it's episode 26. Uh, but, yeah, and with Star Sapphire, I mean, was she uh, using Range Combat Expert? Was she just flying around Leech? And and, and was Leech's taxi? Um, I tended to be chasing her with um, with Morgan Le Fay carrying everyone. So I don't think she ever got a Range Combat shot off, but her phasing willpower meant I was chasing her, like, every turn. <laughs> While this Superman is running around taking pot shots at me as he pleases, because I really want to get rid of this Carol Ferris. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, wow. Okay, and so like, what map were you fighting that on? Were you on the guard map or, or what? Mm -hmm. We were on the guard map, okay. which uh, I can't remember if I chose it or he chose it. But if I chose it. Probably not the best choice for me because I was looking at Superman's hypersonic speed and where he could hide, and I should have been looking at Leech. Yeah, yeah. I, Leech is is one of those figures right now that he wasn't good last year just because there was no way to keep him alive against Nightcrawler. Like with no Nightcrawler, Leech is a is a power eating machine. Like he he just shuts so much stuff down, and then the other thing with Star Sapphire, I could I could see where it's concerning is her last two clicks she has support, and, <laughs> and so you don't want her to be on those clicks, you know, like oh Superman you're not on top click, come over here baby let me hear you heal you with the power of love, just just come here give a nice kiss, yeah, and yeah eighteen defense at range with energy shield, so it's oh yeah. It, it becomes ridiculous. So, uh, I, I was looking at uh, one of the, the games, and I saw the game that you, you had against uh, Patricia Lamb, and she went against, it was the Superman, uh, Doctor Strange, Scarlet Witch combo. And so, with that game, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it from the observer and I say the, the the moment in that game where it all changed is when she moved up her her Doctor Strange too far ahead. She had Doctor Strange right lined up with Eradicator, and then you just took the shot on um, on Doctor Strange. Am, am I wrong on that moment, or what 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 was your your standout moment in that game? No, you're right. I think I think that's the moment. Um... Uh, I had a couple of friends watching the game or teammates watching the game and they told me that uh, they were whispering to each other, oh, he's going to blow out that blocking train and take the shot on Eradicator. It's a hard shot, but I think he's going to do it. And when they turned back, she was taking Doctor Strange off the board. Uh. Um, so I think that Patricia may have thought I would go after Eradicator. And I think everyone else standing there may have thought the same thing. Um, so she had this great psychology about her team, but I knew that that Eradicator, if you let him run loose, uh, then he'll just wait you out to death with his shape shape super senses. So yeah. I had to get the early lead in order to make her come at me. Yeah. And I, I will say this, like, uh, and I'll be honest, I you know, I, I never hide things from people. I thought she had the best team of top 16. 
Like, no offense to your team. I thought she had the best team of top 16. It's just like when I look at that game, that is a game where I felt like she lost it from placement. Um, the, the pure fact that Eradicator would have his top defense plus super senses plus toughness plus energy shield plus hindering <laughs> terrain plus perplex is, is a defense nightmare. I, I I I look at it from from your team standpoint. It I mean the advantage that I see that your team had was uh you know you could double perplex up uh wasp and then perplex up her attack again and give her a thirteen attack. Like that thirteen attack was almost like an auto hit. But even then you yeah. still have to deal with super senses and shape change. And yeah. I mean, failing someone playing like Gina Spell to run and chop Pulse Wave her, everyone was terrified of that defense. I mean, I'm not surprised she got into top 16 with her team building skills and her uh, play style. And she even went to uh, semifinals with me. I mean, she's an incredible player, and I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of her team builds and uh, her actual wins and competitions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so people, uh, be on the lookout. The interview with Patricia is going to be coming up next. It's going to be a super long episode, so I, I do have Patricia coming on. Uh, eventually, I will get George. I'll put him on a different episode, uh, but I'm gonna. I definitely want to get Alex in uh, Patricia on the same episode. So, oh, how cool! Yeah. Okay. So, uh, final round. Final round. Uh, you're you're against a previous world champ. What's 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 in your mind? Are are, are you like I've arrived to the main stage, or oh crap, <laughs> I'm about to face a previous world champion? Um, I was uh, kind of terrified going into the game. You might not have seen it on my face, but um, George Matthew, I had the pleasure of playing him last year at in a Nationals grinder. And I didn't know who he was before we started the game. So he's playing this incredible team. I don't know how someone pulls this team out of field. Uh, John Stewart, I think Mr. Terrific, and Deadshot. Oh, wow. He actually listened to me on John Stewart. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I like promoted that guy for so long. Like John Stewart was like one of my favorite pieces from uh, DC seventy fifth. So good. You're absolutely right. Yeah, he's he's a monster. If you if you're able to keep him, and I know it sounds bad, if you keep John Stewart top click, he becomes one of the biggest threats uh, in in the meta because he he's so hard to hit and hard to get to. But anyway, go go ahead, finish your story. I'll, I'll stop interrupting. <laughs> Oh, no, no, please. Um, John Stewart's amazing. Yeah, the, the free barrier alone, that gave me fits. Um, I would base him with somebody, and he would free barrier along the diagonal and then just break away for free. <laughs> I mean, it was awesome. So after the game, I we started talking. I said, what comic book characters do you like? He says, well, I'm a big fan of Black Adam. I said, oh, I hear the... The world champion from last year is making a Black Adam. I, I hear it's going to be really, really cool. He said, yeah, I, I hear that um, he's going to have multiple point costs. And I said, oh, my God, shut up. Where did you hear that? He said, I'm George Masu. And I, I mean, not melted, but I was like, oh, my God, I just played against the world champ. And it, it didn't matter about, I, I did narrowly win that grinder. But... He was just, he's, I hope everyone gets a chance to play against him. He's professional, he is uh, courteous, he's just a wonderful player. Yeah. Um, not to gush too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I will say this, I've talked with George for a little over a year now about, with, about meta in, in various things, and when... He they released Black Adam. Uh, we had a private conversation, and he was frustrated because in his initial build, Black Adam was indomitable, and then they yeah. took that away, and so he was like really, really 
just sort of angry about that for a little while. And then when all the Gauntlet stuff came out, uh, he was like, man, this actually works out because if he had Indomitable, he cost so much more. <laughs> and so, and so it, it was a, a blessing in disguise. And I, mean, I remember like when Superman came out, he was like, man, I don't see Black Adam being competitive with all this stuff that's, that's going on when Superman came out. And I said to him, I was like, man, it's, it's still good. It's still good. Here's this, this, and this. You know, at 100 points, he's a beast, you know. Um, and so we went back and forth. And, and he told me, you know, well, I'm, I'm going to play something different from Gen Con, different for Gen Con. And I tried to, like, probe and prod, like, so what are you playing for Gen Con, man? And he wouldn't, <laughs> tell, he wouldn't tell me. And then, he's, and then we have a conversation, like, two weeks before Gen Con. He's like, I don't think Black Adam's that good. And I'm like, yeah, I, I can sort of see why. I know you're frustrated on that. It's like, yeah, I am. And then he brings it to Jen Connings in the final round. And I'm like, you made me a liar, George Masu, on my own show. <laughs> so anyway, let's let's go into it. That final round. So so what's what's going into your mind? Um, I I think what was going into everybody's mind first and foremost was how did he do this? Because I was playing my game. I didn't get to see his games. Uh, fortunately, I did get to see the game against the reporter team. And what patience playing and carrying around Harry Whelan can do. Oh, yes. That was a beautiful game. Uh, I can't link to it. Uh, but people, go watch that game. If you And, and I've, I'm not saying this to mock the opponent, but it was the funniest game of Hero Clicks I have ever seen. If you want to see somebody try so hard not to, like, be mad and be nice, but you can tell they're mad, just just watch that game. So, anyway, go, go ahead. Go ahead. You watch the Harry Leland game. Go oh, yeah. Um, so, I'm wondering, how does he get three wins out of this team? How does he, I don't know, He I, I assume he just slow played, which kind of was the case in, in that game. Um, so I called my teammate Paul, who was not able to make it to Gen Con, but he, we had play tested into the wee hours of the morning on Monday night before leaving. Um, and he was following me online, and my teammate Dre was calling him and texting him, saying, oh, he's in the finals, you gotta, you gotta, like, keep posted online. So I called him up because he's, I don't know, he's this amazing clicks mind. He's been playing since, I think, Hyper Time. He used to judge, and he's shown me so many tricks with barrier and ink cap. It's, it's silly. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I call him up, and I say, hey, I'm going up against Master in the finals. He's playing Black Adam, uh, Gauntlet, Harry Leland, and Ma or Monster Society of Evil APA. He said, you know what you have to do, don't you? I said, maybe. What do you think? And he says, you have to kill Harry Leland. I was like, okay, all right. I have to kill Harry Leland. And then as I'm about to hang up, he says, and watch out for Mystic's damage because Black Adam wants to take that Mystic's damage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he gets on hypersonic speed. <sighs> Absolutely, and... If he gets on hypersonic speed carrying Leland around, there's not much you can do. Yeah. I mean, he'll just, he, you know, takes his attack for five <coughs> or, or six, depending on an object, and then plunks Harry down, especially on that Bizarro world map. If he had taken me there, I couldn't have shot him if he just wanted to dance around with Leland. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, You'll see in the game, there's uh, a lot of people call it dancing at the beginning. I move up. Uh, he realizes that this is not going to be a slow tempo game. So he moves up and tries to get the early Monster Society of Evil on my uh, Scarlet Witch. So, like, this dancing happened because I didn't want to in-cap him with Wasp if it was only going to give him a single token. If it mm -hmm. tapped him out, sure. But he wasn't going to give me that shot either. 
Yeah. Because if I just hit him for one and I don't have a follow up attack, uh, he's going to hypersonic speed and there goes my Scarlet Witch. Yeah. And he'll put himself in position to uh, lightning regen, which I'm so glad he got to do that during the match. I mean, it was so cool. I hit him for two and he's like, okay, and lightning regeneration. It's like, oh, the one of the coolest special powers I've ever seen and you just used it at the highest level of play. Awesome. Yeah, and for those listening, lightning regeneration, Black Adam can use regeneration. If he uses it and heals, after the action resolves, deal one penetrating damage to each opposing character within two squares. And it doesn't require a line of fire. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> My only regret is that he didn't yell Shazam before he used the power. Does Black Adam say Shazam? It's, it's, it's been he a does. while. Um, it gets changed during uh, um, not Dark Rain. Like, uh, it's Dark after Ages, World War III. Dark Ages. It's like World War III. And that's actually where the shot of the sculpt comes from, of him choking out Matthew. Mm-hmm. Um, he actually gets his word changed to chocolate egg cream, which yeah. is Billy Batson's favorite soda drink. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, that would have been sort of funny if he did say that. Uh, yeah, but he's, to... I mean, he's a pro. So, he's, you know, he's jovial. He'll joke with you before the match, talk anything you want, except his team before the match. And then, as soon as that round starts... He's completely focused. Like oh, you yeah. see him put down the objects at the beginning of the game. And I'm like, there's there's a reason those objects are there. Sometimes I just throw objects out if I'm not going to pick them up with someone with super strength right off the bat. But he knew. Like, he knew he might have to come back to that corner. So he might as well be able to grab that uh, heavy object on the way. <laughs> I mean, this, this guy's mind works in ways I don't understand. <laughs> I, I, I will say this. Like, each champ that I've talked to, like listening to Scott, listening to Dan, listening to George, uh, for the listener, you need to keep in, in mind that there, there's different elements of being high quality player. It's it's not just play the best and win. It's and, and I mean even Alex is bringing in you know some elements of psychology of pieces that I'm like I I've tinkered with, but I I'm going to now have to like fully mess with because he's proved that it works at a high level. So. We're, we're, we're going back in, and I, I, I see the dance, and I know you end up, there's a point where I said to myself while watching this game, he needs to put uh, Harry Leland down to block Wasp. I think it's like early game, so that he could potentially like break away and kill Wasp. Because uh, Wasp was the only one that wasn't going to give him feedback damage. And... <clears throat> And so then I'm, I'm looking at it, and he keeps missing all of his attacks. <laughs> he, he misses so many attacks. And I'm thinking, like, he has to kill Wasp, or else this is going to be really bad. Or he, because the way you were protecting Scarlet Witch, it was going to be impossible for him to hit Scarlet Witch. With plus two defense, and then you were also, like, perplexing down his attack. I was like, oh, no, he's not going to hit. So he might as well go after Wasp. And Wasp yeah. kept getting away. And then there was a point, and I was wondering if you can explain this to me. Wasp, like, runs really far away to the side of the map. Like, way out of, like, running shot range. And, you know, uh, pretty much Scarlet Witch and Morgan Le Fay is left. Why did you run that Scarlet Witch way the heck out there? Because I know she comes back and does a running shot in. But what was your mindset of moving her out that far? Was it just to get away from Leland? Yeah, I had to get away from Leland. And you can see it's been talked about on the forums at nauseum. But there's a misplay there where I, both George and I forget about the half movement. Um, it turns out to be a moot point because I could have gotten uh, at least five squares away from Leland before he had to clear. Oh... Oh, yeah. Or, I'm sorry, with the barrier I put up, I would have been able to get far enough away from him that he couldn't uh, uh, get his uh, mass manipulation off on uh, Wasp. Hmm. So I just had to... Uh, I had to get out of there to take some sort of shot. Okay. 
because <clears throat> it 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 was a it was one of those moments where I wouldn't say it was like the pivotal moment, but it did lead up to the where I I think the pivotal moment was when Harry Leland died, and it was one of the perplexes was being used to perplex down uh, Black Adam's attack. And then uh, the other perplex was being used to, I think it was up Morgan Le Fay's defense. And you had combat reflexes. And he had like a, uh, I think it was like a 9 attack or a 10 attack. I forgot. I think it's a 10 attack on a 19 defense. <laughs> so uh, at, at once you KO'd Harry Leland, what, what went through your mind at that point? Uh, patience. Okay, you've got the lead. Now wait for your shots. Because mm. if I just rushed in there and faced him with everybody and said, "All right, take your shots," blah 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 blah, uh, he could have hit the space gem, or uh, I'm sorry, the soul gem at the right time. Um, he had the space gem showing, so he knew he could position around me when he needed to. Mm -hmm. So just patience, because it took me another turn to set up the uh, Psychic Blast on Scarlet Witch, uh, or another two turns, because I ended up having to kill Leland. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I looked at the... What, what happened to me when I looked at that mid-game, uh, in particular, and then some of the listeners are like, he's getting really specific about play-by-play. -play. But yeah, um, what, what was very, very particular to me was... You decided not to use Morgan Le Fay as your primary damage dealer. Morgan Le Fay was a very, very expensive cosmic empowered gauntlet carrying taxi for what would normally be seen as the support figure. And the support and, and the roles are reversed, where what should be the primary attacker is now the support, and what is the support is now the primary attacker. And the the dynamics that were involved because you're you're shooting uh, Black Adam uh, with psychic blast and then you're tying him back up so that he can't get away and and so that moment of the game where Scarlet Witch is is taking is is leading the tempo is is where I was like oh this is where it's going to get scary so so what was what was in your mind once you were starting to take those Scarlet Witches? Was it, I mean, using Scarlet Witch as the attacker, was it like, I, I need to get him past hypersonic speed, or was it, you know, I need to just land damage? Um, I think I just wanted to land damage at that point. But you're right about, like, Morgan Le Fay, I wanted to not tap her out, because I had to chase him down wherever he went. And the only one of them who could keep up with him was Morgan Le Fay. Hmm. So the only way to deny attacks to him, or from him, was to keep uh, facing him with Morgan Le Fay. As soon as I gave him a turn to charge someone, or hypersonic speed on someone, one of my support pieces would be dead. Yeah. The first chance he gets to hypersonic speed, really, he kills Wasp right out of the gate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then it becomes very difficult on the, the points then once once Wasp is down because you have Wasp, her 77 points, plus her ATA. And so now yeah. you're, you're playing from behind. Yeah. Yeah. So I needed to get it done at that point. So uh, once I hit power two, and there's another misplay, which George was, I mean, he's, he's a very competitive pro player but he's also very understanding that after nine matches and almost no sleep, we're both going to make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I misplayed and pushed Scarlet Witch before I chose uh, the Gauntlet Power. Um, and if there had been more active judging, I know uh, WizKids or, uh, uh, has the policy of passive judging, which I'm actually a big fan of. Um, I think the judges there do a great job, and every time I attend an event, it gets better, uh, better than the last one. Mm -hmm. um, but a judge won't intervene unless there's obvious signs of cheating, dice uh, tipping, or um, 
just completely misusing an ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and the uh, what I I I will say this from my chess background. And I've and I've been to a bunch of uh, of bigger events, nothing like a con level. But you, if you start the game, if you start your games early in the day, and it's the afternoon, you know people, you know your brain does use a lot of energy. Like you will get tired if you if you're not eating or if you're not able to go to the restroom, you know, frequently. Like uh, when I talked to Dan <laughs> after he won the world championship. He was like he said like pretty much after he he finished it was like I need to go to the restroom because <laughs> you have everything like just built up into you, um, and so those you 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 have some some tough moments overall as a competitor and and you know exhaustion does set in, so we we get to this end game where Black Adam runs away. I figure I, I figure he's just like I need to get an object so I can do significant damage. And then you all retreat back to around Georgia's starting area. So what's what's when that happened? Tactically, what were you thinking? You know, what were you thinking at that point? Well, if if, if he was left alone for long enough, he would have hit Gauntlet um, or Power Two. Mm -hmm. And at that point, regeneration. You know, if if he can uh, deal damage to me faster than uh, I can deal damage to him, then the game's over. And Black Adam, I mean, picking up objects, uh, the plus one from the gauntlet, if he's got that kind of ability, hypersonic speeding, then he can kill, what, most clicks in a one-shot. Mm -hmm. I mean, two of my characters he could have killed with without a gauntlet, or without an object, just straight off the bat, just five damage done. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the 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 one element I will say that had when that that I know firsthand is not being able for Black Adam not to out not to be able to outwit anything was was a big problem because he needed to outwit super senses he needed, <laughs> he needed to outwit psychic blasts uh, he he needed to get rid of so much stuff that he couldn't. Uh, and so it, it neutered some of his his bigger advantages with with Black Adam. Okay, so the the final sort of shot of the game is done by Morgan Le Fay, and <laughs> with with plus two stats, and uh, you KO Black Adam. You know the the time is is set. You you are the new world champion. You know, I, I know it doesn't really show it. Do you, did you want to just, you know, fall out or, like, cry and, and have this, you know, primordial, you know, champion, you know, fist-pumping moment? Or did you just want to be like, I want to go to bed now? <laughs> no, I was so caught up in the moment. I It was surreal. I kept expecting someone to pinch me and wake up and be like, hey, hey, are you going to make a move? Like George Matthew from across the table as I'm daydreaming about winning the world championship. <laughs> um, but you can hear me at the end of the video, I go, ah, because I have all of this, like, nervous energy playing the world champion at this level and all these people around, and it's going to get broadcast on the internet. <laughs> um, when it was all over, I just, I was finally able to release it, and like you said, kind of a, a primal or primordial Yawn, if you will. <laughs> it's the primordial yawn. There we go. That's we'll, we'll add that into our uh, our future uh, repertoire of, of, of phrases. Uh, so I mean, you 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 win. You know, you you call your friends and uh, you know you you say like, "Hey, I'm the world champion." So now you you actually start realizing like you can make Star Girl. So why and I'm and. I've, I know firsthand, like, A, I can't ask you what you want to put in there. So fans uh -oh. of the show, I already know that because I've had two other people tell me the process. So, no, I can't I can't ask him that. I can't ask Alex that. And, B, <laughs> I, I can't ask him what set he wants it to be in. So I, I know that firsthand. So let's, let's go to C. Why did you pick Stargirl of all figures? Are you just a huge JSA fan or is this sort of like, hey, thanks, brother, you know, for teaching me hero clicks 
and in tribute to your play style, here's a figure. You know, what what was the motivation? Um, kind of both. Um, I am a big JSA fan. Again, thanks to my brother. Um, he introduced me to, I mean, most of my comic book knowledge growing up. So uh, at some point, we started talking about Black yeah. Adam and how cool of a character he was. And he said, did you know he was a member of the JSA? I said, no, I didn't. So he starts feeding me, uh, like, one every two or three days, these trade paperbacks of JSA. And so, I, if you haven't read it, um, I think Jeff Johns was writing it for the majority of that run, or maybe the whole run. And the character development, you see members come in, members go out, uh, Jack Knight is in there, uh, one of Courtney Whitmore's legacies. <laughs> you get to see you know, the original superheroes teaching new superheroes. You get Alan Scott, the original Green Lantern, Jay Garrick, the original Flash, and uh, Ted Grant, that's it, uh, the original Wildcat. Yeah. They're teaching these new heroes what it means to fight, what it means to be a hero. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's a big thing for me. I mean, I... Uh, you know, everybody wants to be their, their best self. And the term that most resonates with me is hero or superhero. I'm like, I think we can all be our own superheroes. We can all hold ourselves to uh, a better moral standpoint. Mm -hmm. So I'm reading these JSAs, and eventually Courtney Whitmore, Stargirl, gets inducted into the JSA. And she starts with this kind of bratty... Uh, high school girl, she doesn't really want to listen, but she's really excited to be on a superhero team. And you get to see her way back from her debut in Stars and Stripe, uh, all the way to Jeff John's farewell issue of JSA. You see this young girl with a really headstrong, you see her turn into a hero. Hmm. Like, and... You know, if she's a capable, intelligent young woman, but if she can do it, you know, everyone can do it. Everyone can become a, uh, a superhero. Hmm. So it's ah oh, okay. So it's it has a deeper sort of motivation overall for you to pick that character. Then I am a fanboy. I like her. <laughs> you know, I want to see her in clicks again. You know, it's yeah. Yeah. Um, she is my favorite superhero. I have some comic book villains who top her in my list of characters, but as far as superheroes go, it uh, doesn't get any better than Courtney Whitmore for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. I think the listeners uh, probably know by now. I don't know. I don't know how many times I've said this. Like, if I was able to create a character for clicks, just on power level, now. <sighs> I've had to I had to go back and forth in my head a couple of times. I would do uh, Doctor Voodoo when he is both like uh, like Voodoo Master Supreme and uh, pretty much. I was about to say Scientist Supreme because I watched uh, way too much uh, Avengers Earth Mightiest Heroes on on demand. <laughs> but uh, pretty much <laughs> Magician Supreme, sorry, Sorcerer Supreme, and uh, I, I always wanted to make him to have like massive, like, negation powers. Because when you read the story in which uh, he becomes uh, the Sorcerer Supreme, uh, Doctor Doom tries to take the, the ability, and I read that trade, and I thought, like, A, he's, he's one of my... when I After I read that trade, he became one of my favorite uh, black superheroes because it wasn't just about how powerful he was, but it was how much he was trying to take on to himself and how much problems that he had. And then uh, if I could do him, if, if I could make this figure, I think I would have like a whole lot of happy and pissed off Green Lantern fans, but I would redo Jon Stewart. I, I would actually make him like a full dial sniper marine pro high level character figure. I, I always feel like when they make him, they sort of jip him. They just, <laughs> you like, you look at Hal, then you look at Kyle, then you look at John, and it's like, oh, and you look at Guy, and Guy had his ups and downs, 
Like, the last version of Guy wasn't that bad. But John sort of, he has, he, he's never really had that awesome click that made you say on all your Green Lantern teams, you're going to pack John Stewart. So, that's, that's what right. I do. Um, I think they've always gone either with the architect aspect, or I'm sorry, they go with the architect aspect, and then they tack on the Marine. Almost as an afterthought. They're like, okay, barrier and uh, defend, and oh, okay, he's a Marine, right? We'll give him sharpshooter. Yeah. I mean, if they went, you're right, if they went full-blown Marines, like, he knows how to sneak around. He can have stealth and uh, range combat expert. That's a great pick, man. Yeah. But again, I have to, if you know, I have to earn it, <laughs> like everyone else. But uh, it's one of those, if I dream and then get enough money to go, then I would be there. So, anyway, uh, since we, we're just going to wrap things up, is there anything that you want to give a shout-out to? I know you have your crew, uh, which I, I, I know I should have, little, you know, talked a little bit more about. But, you know, any, anything you want to give a shout-out to? Oh, absolutely. Thanks. Um, so, my co-team is called Team Rubicon. Um, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six members at this time, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I have my boy, uh, Jim Mattingly, out in Portland, Oregon. He's, he hasn't been able to come to the cons with us, um, and he's not as experienced with the game as some of the rest of us, but he has a strong uh, music theory background. So, I know it sounds strange, but when he talks about the tempo of a team, it's like he's talking about music, and I can see what he's talking about with the action tokens, and um, he's a big fan of Incap like me. <laughs> um, we also had two members in North Carolina. Um, those are my buddies, uh, John Compton and uh, Jake Whitlow. Jake Whitlow I actually met for the first time Going up to Gen Con, uh, John brought him along, said he had a friend who played clicks, wanted to go to Gen Con, and, like, we hit it off. We, like, all three of us, uh, John, uh, Jake, and I, played the Morgan Le Fay Scarlet Witch Wasp combo uh, to try to get into day two. Hmm. Um, and, well, John Compton, or, uh, John Compton, uh, anyways, he has a really strong magic background. He's been to a couple of Pro Tour events, and he took to Hero Clicks like it was second nature because he understood some of the concepts like uh, tempo advantage and denying people their possibilities. Um, Jake is an accomplished uh, Star Wars miniatures player, as well as I think a game called Dream Blade. He's, uh, he's oh a yeah, I remember that game. Yeah. That's I haven't I haven't had the pleasure of playing it, but he says it's it's wonderful, and if I like Hero Clicks, then I'd really like that game too. Yeah, Dream Blade is like chess meets clicks meets expensive hobby. Like those pieces <laughs> for Dream Blade are ridiculous, and the only reason I know that is that one of the former judges, when I was in Tulsa, played that game, and how much he paid per piece, I was like, forget that. That was just ridiculous. Wow. Yeah, and I think it went under, too. I'm not quite sure. I, I, I haven't really kept up with it, but I, I didn't hear. The last news I heard on it wasn't positive. But anyway, go go ahead with your shout-outs. <laughs> oh, thanks. No, 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 absolutely. I, I got to check into if that game's still playing because I'd like to try it out sometime. Um, anyways, uh, my best friend, uh, Andre Robinson, uh, I talked about him earlier. He took Century Void to uh, 15th place in the semifinals. Um, he's been playing with me for about two years. Um, he goes with me to every, almost every tournament I go to, uh, almost every convention we go to, we're there together. Um, he more likes Superman and Black Adam and Century Boy. He loves these big beat stick characters uh, because he's very good with positioning and hiding behind walls, and he, he knows the right time to count out squares and the right time to say, oh, you've got Psychic Blast, I'll just base you. Yeah. Um, he's grown as a player exponentially since when I first taught him. And I like I, I don't know what I'd do without him. Talking uh, strategy late night with him is where I come up with uh, most of the good ideas I do. <laughs> um, and then last but certainly not least, 
Uh, I have my friend Paul Briggs. Um, I talk about him briefly as well. He has been playing Hero Clicks, I think, since Hypertime. He used to judge. Uh, one of his favorite clicks is the Judge L.E. Rupert, which is the L.E. of Mole Man. And if you've ever been on the other end of a triple target uh, ink pass tape with Stunning Blow from him, you know how annoying he can be. Hmm. Um, uh, Paul taught me the tricks about barrier, incapacitate, uh, poison, like all all the things you don't have to roll dice for. Uh, Paul is the best in my mind. <laughs> um, uh, play testing the team leading up to Gen Con. I play tested against Dre ten games in a row one night, and he couldn't beat uh, the Morgan Lafay team. And then I play tested with. Uh, Paul, and on two different nights, he beat my team. Once with Magog, and once with, I know you're going to laugh, Destroyer with the Full Gauntlet. No, no, I've seen Destroyer with the Full Gauntlet. Now, I, I didn't think he was Gen Con worthy, but in like a normal game, I think he can be, he, he can scare some people. Uh, and definitely when his attack values are ridiculous. And you are talking about, like, it, yeah, there's only one legal destroyer from Avengers movie, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that, yeah. It, and that sucker's still, like, expensive. Like, you can't find it real cheap. But, eh. Oh, that's it? Yeah, try to get Odin online. He's still, I think, 40 or 50 bucks. Nope, I got mine for $25. <laughs> I got mine for $25. I t- <laughs> No one was looking at it, and now and, and I got it right when Chaos War dropped, and so everyone was looking at Chaos War. <laughs> I got mine for twenty five dollars. It, it was like the oh. biggest steal on uh, that I've gotten in the last few weeks. And then, like before That's that, awesome. yeah, uh, before that, I got uh, what was it? Uh, Hulk Mariner for fifteen, and then the oh. uh, um, what was it? The uh, Mister Fantastic Chase for ten. And that is a steal. I'm telling you, you go to China. I, I, you know, I'm not going to hate. You go to China, you pay, you know, Sun Tzu over there, you know, the money. He picks it off the line. I don't care. The dial's correct, and he will send it to you. You know, I have like a couple of people over there. I'm like, yo, man, you you do good business, and they send it to you as fast as it can get to you from China. I've had stuff arrive to me from China faster than some things from the United States. Okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> them, them, there's, there's a couple guys I do business with over there, and and I trust them with my money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and if it helps him improve his life, you know, more power to it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, Thanks. So just uh, everybody, you know, if you see uh, Alex online, what, what's your handle online? I forgot uh, for AC Realms. Oh, on AC Realms, it's Rathius, R-A-T-H-I-U-S, which is uh, an original character of mine. Uh, okay. um, yeah, feel free. If anybody sees me online, PM me, uh, you know, drop me a visitor message. Anybody who wants to talk strategy, anybody who wants to... You know, I don't know, anything. I mean, the the Realms is a great community with a lot of positive energy and creativity behind it. Yeah. So, you know, hit him up. Uh, he's a great guy. And uh, I'd like to thank him again for being on the show. Uh, again, oh, thanks you, for having me. <laughs> if you uh, have any questions, comments, concerns, hit me up at startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, that's startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to have Alex, George, Scott, or any other myriad of people uh, that's been on, back on, uh, to talk about some topic, uh, we do episodes made to order. Uh, definitely, I think, uh, two to three episodes uh, we have up are specifically from listener requests. So don't feel shy in uh, PMing me. Uh, so this is the end of my interview with Alex. And what we're going to do is part two. Uh, So stick around for that.